Hello, I hope you're having a wonderful day today. I have the windows open, it feels beautiful out. I have ketchup going on the stove top, I'm very excited. If you watched any of my previous videos, I said that my goal this year was to grow enough tomatoes to where I had plenty of pasta sauce, because I use that for everything, spaghetti sauce, lasagna, pizza sauce, then make salsa, and then I'm going to make ketchup, and I am able to make a lot of ketchup. The Lord has blessed us abundantly and I'm so grateful. So I will put that ketchup recipe below because it is very tasty if you want to can your own ketchup this year. I do it a little bit differently because I use our Vitamix to blend up the tomatoes. I blend the skin and the seeds and I just do it twice. So I boil it down a little bit, let it cool, blend it again to make it super smooth and then put it back in the pot reboil it again and then add all the rest of the ingredients and so it ends up taking me a few days it is a process but right now i have a huge pot full and it is 44 pounds of tomatoes that have been blended up that i'm now boiling down to then be able to can our ketchup and i am carrying on with the series that i've been doing on our biblical role as wife my first video in the series was on submission my last video was on obeying god no matter the cost and this video is on being our husband's helper or help meet or help mate, however you want to say it. As with all of my videos, my hope is just in sharing my testimony that you will find encouragement from it, from things that we have gone through and learned through. That's the only place that we feel we have any authority to share from is from our own personal experience and what we feel God has taught us and grown us in. And so I pray that it is encouraging for you because what he's done for us he can do for you. And also, I know that a lot of you have said that these videos, they resonate with you and they just help put words to the things that you already feel. So that's my hope and prayer as well. And this is for married women, but also for my single sisters out there. I pray that you will find encouragement from this video as well. So we're going to start at the very beginning in Genesis, where God originally made Eve and called her Adam's helper. So starting in Genesis 2 verse 18, the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make a helper fit for him. And then God makes Eve. And so we go to Genesis 2 verses 24 and 25. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and not ashamed. And now we're going to move to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And this verse is a little bit, I guess, controversial or convicting because it is totally a different worldview than our popular culture's worldview today. The biblical worldview is counter to popular culture worldview. The feminist mindset has indoctrinated so many people that this verse is very counter to a lot of people's core belief systems. Even a lot of people who call themselves Christians, they don't actually have a biblical worldview. And this verse is from 1 Corinthians 11, verse 8 through 9. For man was not made from woman, but woman from man. Neither was man created for woman, but woman for man. So in my early 20s, I was in a context, a group setting, and there was a woman in this context that I was on familiar terms with, and I had heard her say that she needed a husband because she needed a helpmeet. And I remember even then, it really struck me as a little bit confusing because I was like, well, that's weird for you to be saying that because you're a woman. <laughs> and the Bible says that Eve was Adam's helper, not Adam was Eve's helper. But she was so set in her mind that she needed a helpmeet, which is the complete inversion of what Paul says in 1 Corinthians, that neither was man created for woman, but woman was created for man. And so what she was saying was she needed a man to be her helper. But she's not alone in that. Most women in today's world go around thinking that man was created for them. 
that husbands are meant to make their wife happy. And men are taught that their whole purpose in life is to make their wife happy, that they are their wife's helper, and that they were made to serve her happiness at all costs. That's where that saying, uh, happy wife, happy life comes from. And I've commented on that saying in another video, and someone said, I don't see a problem with that saying. And if it was in the context of being a happy wife makes for a happy life, or I think a better saying would be cheerful wife, cheerful life, because a cheerful wife makes for a cheerful life, not only for her, but for her husband as well. But that is not the context of that saying. Whenever that saying is said, happy wife, happy life, it is a man saying, well, gotta do whatever you gotta do to make sure your wife's happy so she doesn't throw a tantrum so i don't upset my wife gotta keep her happy don't want to upset the woman and so you'll hear men say happy wife happy life basically saying she gets whatever she wants and excusing emotional manipulation really totally inverting the scripture of submission that wives are to submit to their husbands because yes, men are supposed to live with their wives with understanding, but both of those work. And oftentimes, many times in contexts that we've seen, more often than not, the wife is not willing to submit to her husband or the wife thinks that the husband was meant to make her happy. And if you go into marriage thinking that the purpose of marriage is for your own happiness, then you're gonna be so disappointed. The purpose of marriage is not for our happiness. Now, marriage does bring happiness. I love being married. Being married for me is far better than being single. I praise God for my husband. I am so grateful to be married. And that's why I want other people who are single to experience marriage because marriage is good. But if you think marriage is gonna fulfill you, you are going to be sorely disappointed because no man can ever fulfill you. No husband can ever fulfill you. Only Jesus can fulfill you. No man can fulfill the role of Jesus in your life. And the irony is people will hear this and be like, well, don't you want your wife to be happy? Shouldn't a husband want his wife to be happy? Of course, every husband wants his wife to be happy, but he doesn't want to be manipulated by his wife because again, that's counter to scripture of wives respect your husband. We are meant to respect our husband, not passive aggressively or flat out aggressively manipulate them to get our ways. I was talking about this with Scott because I always, all of these videos I pray about and I usually spend weeks praying about them, taking notes as I'm going throughout my day, and then I will kind of read my notes over to Scott. And when I was reading this section to him, he made a comment which I thought was so good. He said, if a child isn't taught to respect the word no, they will throw tantrums until they get their way. And we saw this when we were flying to South Africa in December. We were waiting for our plane and we were sitting right next to a vendor's booth and there was this boy who must have been around five years old and he wanted something from the vendor's booth and his parents said no so he threw himself on the ground screamed and was just making a huge scene so the mom went and ran to the vendor's booth bought two things ran back to the kid leaned over handed to him to make sure he could see that she bought the stuff he stood up grabbed the two things and smiled and started walking and Scott and I just looked at each other we were like he just won they just rewarded his bad behavior. And I can't help but think that there are women who are now adults, but as little girls, they weren't told the word no, and they weren't taught to respect the word no. So then they become adult women, and when their husbands say no, they refuse to respect his no. I've had to learn this. When Scott says no, it's not maliciously or it's not to bring me harm. It's normally for our good. It's because he sees the bigger picture. He is seeing the full vision. Uh, the masculine way is they create the frame and us women are very fluid and we were meant to fill the frame. And so it's important for husbands to hold frame and for us as wives to respect our husbands when they hold frame. There have been times, and I've said this before, I love going to coffee shops. It's one of my favorite things. I could go to a coffee shop every single day and get a cold brew because I just love the atmosphere. I love the feeling of it and it's a problem. And so there are times when I have this temptation to go to a coffee shop. And so I say to Scott, do you wanna to go to a coffee shop? Or I'm thinking about going to a coffee shop today. And 
I desperately want him to say, I don't think that's a good idea because I know that I shouldn't, but my flesh wants to, or my coffee addiction, um, or the atmosphere addiction. I don't know, but there will be times when he's like, oh yeah, that's fun. Or he'll say, let's not today. Let's save it for this day. And in a way I'm relieved, obviously immediately I'm like, oh, like dying to myself. But a lot of times afterwards, I'm so relieved that he said no. And I needed that boundary. I needed that reinforcement of, okay, not today, but in the future, we will go to a coffee shop. And I know that that's just a small little pitiful example, but that is an example of respecting our husband's no, because he sees a bigger picture. He sees the bigger vision. He sees that delayed gratification is good, and he helps me enforce that. So back to the story of the girl that I was on familiar terms with uh, in our early 20s, and she said that she needed a helpmeet for a husband. Now, she is, to this day, still single. When we were in the same context, she was so mission focused. Her whole life revolved around this single vision, this single purpose, single focus. And she had this idea in her mind that the man that God had for her needed to be on this same mission and focus. And there were guys who pursued her and she didn't even give them a chance. Uh, they were not good enough for her because she did not think that they were going to be able to be helpmeets for her and what she felt God was calling her to do. And it's really sad to me because she is still single all these years later and she is still single. And how common is that though now for there to be so many sincere Christian women who do love the Lord, who want to obey him, but they have been so indoctrinated by this feminist mindset of you have a purpose, you have a goal, you are meant to be this strong, independent woman that they never open themselves up to being pursued. And that's the blessing of getting married is you then create a vision together and you go together and the Lord moves you in different ways that you could never imagine, but you do it together and you do it as your husband's helper. To have this mindset of there are things in our life that maybe God couldn't do unless my husband and I were together on the same page with this vision. And that's going to be unique to everyone. That's going to be unique to your household, the vision that you and your husband have for your life. And that's why I always say in all my videos, a wife's purpose is going to look very unique to the vision that you have for your family. So you can't compare your everyday life to what other people are doing because God has called us all to unique purposes, but those purposes are not separate from our husband. Because so often today, and it often destroys marriages and then therefore destroys children because a wife has her own purpose, a husband has his own purpose. They're on two totally different pages. I've said this before, but there's two visions, die. There is a die vision. There is a division in their marriage. And this is totally counter to what God says in Genesis of the two becoming one flesh. There is a listener who commented on one of my videos and he said he was showing my videos to his teenage daughters because they don't have a mother figure in their life. And he gave this beautiful picture that he felt the Holy Spirit give him. And I asked him if I could read it in one of my future videos and he said yes. So he said, Every woman needs to understand that from a man's perspective, he is the captain of his ship that is sailing the seas of life. He invites a woman to join him on his journey as his primary helper to help him in the cabin, house, the crew, children, and general navigation. He invites her on board so together they can have a better journey than being alone, so he can travel farther and eventually leave a trail of other similar captains with their ships who can sail on without them. No man who wants a wife for life invites her on board so he can dedicate his life to making her feel happy. He does not invite her on board because he needs more drama. The normal storms of life are drama enough. No man in his right mind invites a woman on board to abscond with half of the cargo of his ship, to lead a mutiny, or to run off with his crew at the next port. 
This is the general idea of what is automatically in the mind of a man who seeks a lifetime commitment to marriage. Sadly, most modern women think that they have their own ship to sail, and this leads to shipwrecks. And isn't that so true? Can't you see that in our culture today? And I know that I talk about this a lot, and Scott talks about this a lot, and this is probably what we get the most pushback on, but this is the problem with college. The institution of college creates in women a mindset that they are individuals and that they need to go and pursue their own purpose, their own mission. And that is the mindset that was pushed on me. I went into college with the sincerest desire to get married, be a wife, be a mom, be a homemaker. I thought for sure I would meet my husband in college. That didn't end up happening, but what did end up happening was all of the questions of, well, what are you gonna do with your life? What is your purpose? What is your mission? What happens if you don't get married? What happens if you're not supposed to get married? What happens if you never have a husband? Then what are you gonna do? So then you start planning your whole life around all of those questions instead of, well, no, I do want to get married and I do want to have children. So that is going to be at the forefront of my mind is what will it look like one day for me to be a wife and a mother? And if you are in college and you keep that focus, praise God, keep that focus, keep that feminine nature in you. Do not let the college university steal that from you. But so often that is actually what happens in universities. And it is so bizarre because most women will get married. Most women do get married. Most women will have children. So why not help our daughters in preparing for their role of being a wife and being a mother? The university system is completely counter to the biblical worldview. It is unfortunately been co-opted into a communist, socialist, feminist, institution where there is no difference between men and women. Men and women are the same. There is no difference. A woman can do and should do anything that a man can do. That is the influence. That is the nature. That is the environment of universities. And I think that's why there are so many women in their 30s that deeply desire to be married but aren't because their whole early 20s when they were building their career they were told you don't need a man. You need to be strong and independent. So that is what they embraced. And I know the question will be well then what is a girl supposed to do when she's single if she doesn't go to college? And I've said this in other videos but it's worth repeating because this comes up so much. There are many things. There are so many things that a young woman can do and not go to college. The opportunities in our world today, it's endless. I have an entire video where I say all the things that I did after college are all things that I could have done without going to college. I will link that video below. The Proverbs 31 woman, she wasn't a boss babe. She was extremely creative. She was intuitive. She was a problem solver. Everything about the Proverbs 31 woman was a creative woman who did her work from the home, for the home, under the authority of her husband. And that is the vision that we can give our young daughters and how much better will it be for them when they do get married because they did not get indoctrinated by this feminist mindset that you need to be this individualistic person and you don't need a man. You can go have a career and have your own life. And there are consequences to that. Again, there are women in their 30s who deeply desire to be married and they're not. There are women in their 40s who are not married and they wanted children and they're not. And it is so sad. It's even hard to talk about because I know that there will be people listening to this and they will feel the pain of the times of their life. And I never want to be someone who didn't tell the truth about this. I would much rather my life be lived to help young ladies not walk down these similar paths so that way they don't have to deal with those consequences. Not being a victim of our own story, but also helping the next generation be prepared to be a wife and a mother. And besides just the indoctrination that happens in colleges, there are so many people that we know, so many girls that we know that they have not been able to become homemakers because they went into hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt and they have to work as well as their husband to pay off 
that debt. Or even worse, I mean, we know a family where the wife, she went and she got her doctorate. And then she worked and became the breadwinner of their family before they even had children. And she became the sole provider. And then they had children. And because she made so much money, the husband, he didn't focus on his career. So he became a stay-at-home dad. And now many children later, she has vocalized that she would love to be a stay-at-home mom. That is her deepest desire, to homeschool, be a stay-at-home mom. But because they had spent their whole 20s on building up her career and forsaking his work, again, the inversion of scripture, now she can't enter her feminine role, which is the deepest desire of her heart. She is still working and her husband is the stay-at-home dad. And it's a golden cage. I mean, it requires extreme bravery to get out of that. I do think it can be done. I think it requires a lot of humility and maybe even being humiliated because you go from one status to looking like another because you need to sell things, uh, really simplify your lifestyle, maybe move, maybe move to a new town to be able to make that situation work. But it's a lot harder. It's a lot harder to taste the riches that you experienced and then go back down to living a very simple lifestyle. I do think that's the blessing of starting off marriage where you're not making a lot of money. You really learn how to be frugal and you grow in that and it becomes a game. It becomes a game to win. And then even as more income comes in, you already developed the skills of being a frugal and prudent wife because you had to do with little. And those are virtues that you will carry for the rest of your life because you know what it's like to live with little. And God providing for us and blessing us, that is a blessing. But it's good to learn to be a good steward so that when blessing comes, you're a wise manager of those blessings. Again, the Proverbs 31 woman, she was a wise woman who stewarded blessings and wealth well. So my next video is going to be on the practicals of how to be our husband's helper because like I said it will be unique to everyone but there are specific things that we can practically do in our everyday life that will help our husbands and will be the Proverbs 14 one woman of building our home. The wisest of women builds her home. A foolish woman tears it down. So there are wise things that we can do within our home to be helpers of our husband. So I will break those down in the next video but I just wanted to give a big overall picture of the blessing of being our husband's helper and how cool it is that we were put on earth to be our husband's helper. I get comments on that video that I did on helping my husband is my career. And the one, it actually made me laugh. It said, um, they said, oh honey, I feel that you've lost your autonomy. And I read that and it made me laugh because I was like, well, yeah, I did. That's kind of what happens when you become a Christian. You do lose your autonomy. The word autonomy or autonomous means self-government. And when we become Christians, we live in submission to the Lord. And when we become married, we are no longer self-governed. We live in submission to our husbands. So being autonomous is not biblical. And that doesn't mean I don't have skills. I don't have hobbies. I don't have talents. I don't have things that I love to do. I just, all the things that I love to do are part of the vision that Scott and I have created together for our household. And it's a joy to get to do these things together because I know all of my passions, all the things that I love to do, they're also building our home, it's building the kingdom, and they are things that Scott loves that I love, and they're a blessing to him. So helping your husband doesn't mean you no longer have passions or talents. It means that your passions and talents are in alignment with the vision that you have. And if you're single, be open to that vision changing. When I was single, I wanted to be a missionary in Africa. That's where I met Scott. So even more so, I was like, well, this is definitely happening because I am marrying a guy from South Africa. And we are not missionaries in South Africa. And I am so glad because Proverbs 16, 9 says, a man makes a plan in his heart, but the Lord directs his steps. So we can make plans in our hearts, but it is the Lord who directs our steps. That is why we live in submission to him. We give all of our desires to him. And we see sometimes he gives those desires back to us in ways that we could never imagine. But we live a life of surrender to him. Jesus says in Matthew 10 39, whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life 
for my sake, will find it. And so our life is not our own. Our life is lived in submission to the Lord. And God's word is very clear that we were made to be our husband's helper. And so I hope this video has been encouraging to you. I will have the next video out soon on practical ways that we can be helpers of our husband and be the wise woman who builds her home. And in the last video, someone asked if there was any books on this topic that I could recommend, and there are. There's three books that I love. Uh, Let Me Be a Woman by Elizabeth Elliot. She also has, there's a podcast of all of her old recordings, which is free and such a blessing. I love listening to her podcast. So there's those two resources. Uh, Created to Be His Help Meet by Debbie Pearl has blessed me so much. She has a book also for single ladies, and it's called Preparing to Be His Help Meet. I've read through that because I wanted to read it before I recommended it, and that was a few years ago, but even then, that really blessed me reading that book. And um, then the other book is The Power of a Transformed Wife by Lori Alexander. So I highly recommend those books, and I hope that this video was a blessing to you, and I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day.